Shlama Amchun. It's the beginning of a new liturgical year for the Church of the East. We begin always four Sundays before Christmas with a season called Subara or Annunciation, in, uh, which is about the Annunciation of the birth of Christ. But those four Sundays that lead up to the Sunday before Christmas each have their own theme and they each indicate some of the archaic or very old ways of the Church of the East. So we begin the year always thin. That's when we go to our first volume of our Chudra. And last Saturday, I grabbed volume one, went to the beginning of the Chudra in Keshkul, and the Chudra in Keshkul, or Chudra for short, is the book that has all the Sundays that fall on the calendar that starts with four Sundays before Christmas, because Christmas is a fixed feast. So December 25th is December 25th. Theophany or Dimcha is always the 6th of January, but uh, there's also a cycle of weeks of weeks. So we call them Shavu'ah, which means a week, but we use the word Shavu'ah in two ways. It can be Shavu'ah the Thrain, the second week, it's Shavu'ah it's Subara, of the season or the week of weeks. And it is a Hebraic concept that goes back to ancient Judaism. Um, and so there's a very ancient uh, deep root in it, and it's beautiful in the idea of connectivity with um, the Oreita, with the connection between God and man, the covenant uh, made on Sinai, which is one of the great features of the Church of the East. It's something that pervades all our liturgical texts. And so part of that is that oftentimes we privilege the week of week system. So we do not have an Annunciation on the 25th of March, which would be nine months before December 25th, right? So Western churches do the 25th of March. We have Annunciation built into the calendar of Sundays. It is the first, I'm sorry, the second Sunday of Subara. So the first Sunday of Subara, pick up uh, four Sundays before December 25th. So December 25th this year is on a Saturday. The Sunday before that, fourth Subara. The Sunday before that, third. Before that, second. And we get to last Sunday, first Subara, first of Annunciation. And so that reading of the Gospel, that a theme of that Sunday is the Annunciation of John's birth to Zechariah, to Zacharias. This upcoming Sunday, being the second Sunday of Subara is that of the Subara or the Annunciation of Christ's birth to the Holy Virgin Mary. The Sunday after that is the birth of John, and the Sunday after that is the Matthew reading of Christ's promised birth, um, in which he uh, speaks to Joseph and tells him to not fear taking Mary. And then we have Christmas, December 25th. And then after that, we have a period in which we have to deal with two fixed feasts, two feasts that are on this calendar that's um, uh, this Western calendar of December 25th and then January 6th, Theophany. And so December 25th, it also ends the period of Subara. And then the Sunday after it is the first Sunday after Christmas, um, in which we commemorate um, the slaughter of the innocents by Herod and the visit of the Magi. I guess the visit of the Magi and the slaughter of the innocents. And if there are two Sundays before December 25th and January 6th, we'll also get a second Sunday after Christmas, after Nativity, which would be um, when we would commemorate Christ's presentation in the temple, um, being held in the arms of Simeon, his circumcision, as well as his later at 12, 13 years old being found in the temple. So all of that gets compacted into a Sunday. So these are, of course, on the Western calendar, the Greek, the Latin, uh, many Western calendars, I believe also the Coptic. These are separate feast days. Um, these aren't feast days for us in the, uh, in the sense that they are a Sunday. Um, they definitely would not be less than a feast day. Uh, they are incorporated into this tight unit. And this unit also extends to the Fridays of this period. So the Friday after Nativity, um, if there are two Fridays between Nativity and Theophany, if there are three, there's a additional Friday that's not a special commemoration. But if there are two Fridays or one Friday between 
like this year, there's one Friday between Nativity and Theophany, then the first Friday is going to commemorate the Holy Virgin Mary. It's her Dukhrana, it's her feast day, literally meaning her day of uh, her memorial, but in this sense, it's a feast day. We're asking for her prayers, not praying for her repose. And on that Dukhrana del Hulta, the feast day of the Virgin, that is connected to Christmas because it's always the Friday after Nativity. So it would be like a synaxis in the Greek tradition. Similarly, the Friday after Theophany has St. John the Baptist. And, and the reading for the Dukhrana del Tulta, the uh, Feast of the Virgin, is the genealogy of Christ because it's through her that he is of the house of David. He can be the promised Messiah. It commemorates all the holy forefathers of our Lord God and Savior. And then you have Theophany, and then coming at the other end of Theophany, we're already looking ahead to Lent. So we have another period in which we've got a day like the first Sunday of Great Lent, which is the seventh Sunday before Easter, right? And Easter is the first Sunday after the first full moon, after the, the first day of spring. So Easter sets a stop with Lent, and then whenever January... January 6th happens, the first Sunday after it is the first of Epiphany, and all those Sundays are Epiphany. So that period can have five, or it can have as many as nine, although very rarely, as many as nine Fridays in it. And each one of those Fridays has a fixed commemoration. So this is how the cycle works in the Church of the East. You have these periods that are fixed length, like Subara, the four Sundays before Nativity, like Great Lent, seven Sundays, right? You're not going to have Lent go longer and shorter. And then you have periods that can, like an accordion, contract or expand, like Epiphany, as small as five weeks or five Fridays, as expansive as nine. And that also puts a lot of our saints, the majority of our saints, into the calendar that is this Chodra. It's not Gaza. So Gaza is the fixed feats. Like Christmas is Gaza. It's from the Book of Fixed Feasts. That's a book that has the information for the, the liturgical texts for December 25th, January 6th. Um, you know, St. George is there because he's April 24th. Um, yeah, Transfiguration is there. You know, uh, the August commemoration of the Blessed Virgin Mary is there of her repose because those are all set on calendar dates. But we tend to really put a lot of saints within the cycle. So you might have a saint on the third Wednesday of whatever period, whichever Shawa. Um, and the Fridays of Theophany always have a commemoration. So the first Friday after Theophany is going to be St. John the Baptist. And the last Friday before the first Sunday of Great Lent is always going to be Aruth et Anide, the Friday of the departed or of uh, the dead, because it's the day in which we commemorate all the righteous departed um, as we go into Great Lent, uh, which is a feature that's similar to a Byzantine idea also, that this preparate, preparatory period before uh, Great Lent. Um, and, you know, Friday, Saturday, it's interesting that that connection between these two liturgical traditions. But so the Friday before Great Lent is going to be Aruth Danide, always. St. John the Baptist is going to be commemorated the Friday after Theophany, always. And question is, what to do with the commemorations in between? So I'll go through them real quick. Second Friday after Theophany is going to be um, Saints Peter and Paul. And then the third, the four uh, evangelists, Saint Stephen on the fourth. The fifth, the Greek fathers. So that's Theodore, Theodore Nosturus. Um, the sixth, the Syriac fathers, Melpane Surgaye. So as the teachers of the school of Nisibis, Ephraim, Narsai, um, and they, they have a bigger list of those. Um, the seventh, Mara'awa, the great, the first. Um, so the feast day of our patriarch, Mara'awa Tlithaya. Um, and then um, after that, the eighth of the 40 martyrs, and then the ninth of the departed. Almost never is all that done. Usually the 40 martyrs are the first drop, 
and then you'll start unifying Peter and Paul with the uh, four evangelists, and in a really contracted year, uh, the Greek and the Syriac fathers united into one day. And that also, when those Fridays combine, the Sundays that are after them also combine. So accordion like, we collapse that period, and then we allow the calendar to function. There's really cool stuff. One thing about this is that it really sets the experience, liturgical experience, into this cycle. That's why we think of our liturgical prayer, of our life at prayer, as khudra, as uh, like khdara we say in modern, it's like to take a walk. So we're walking the cycle through. Um, and it has a rhythm, and people who know it well can very quickly calculate this, although to properly calculate when everything happens, there's a really complicated chart. Uh, and I'll have to do a video about that, but I wanted to introduce the general idea of the Khudra, of the cycle of prayer of the Church of the East, right now that we're beginning it here and uh, concluding the first week of Subara, of Annunciation. Our fasting periods are also on this, so right now we're in the Nativity Fast. It began with the first Sunday of Subara, um, so four Sundays before Christmas. We begin our Nativity Fast, we enter into that period of the year. Um, and uh, it also adds this uh, sense of certain periods that are really preparatory. So as we're going into Great Lent, we're having all these really major commemorations fall on Fridays. It's also kind of cool in America because you can have Friday liturgies um, like here we have at the cathedral. And then that covers a lot of the feast days um, of the saints. And um, we also have during this period... 21 days before the start of Great Lent, so the Monday, 20 days before Great Lent, we have um, Ba'uth and Maya, the rogation of Ninevites. So there, there's this really um, shift that happens, I think, spiritually. I mean, I kind of look ahead to it as this more intense time that begins with Subara, with the beginning of the liturgical year, heats up to Christmas, even more towards Theophany, because Theophany is a bigger feast. Um, and then we hit those Fridays with these major saints commemorations. They tend to be a lot of texts. They tend to be um, really uh, kind of have an extra oomph to them. And then Ba'uth and Nenuaye, and then Great Lent, um, all the way through. And then, of course, we have another couple periods that are accordion-like and a couple more fixed ones at the other end of Lent. So like the Sundays of the Resurrection are fixed, and then you have the Apostles' Fast, is accordion like with that eta that comes before subara is four but the period before that sliwa um, is accordion like so that's how the year goes there's a great book in the description it's by uh, mara aprim the metropolitan of india about the calendar of the church of the east i think having watched this video it might be a little easier to understand it's linked there's an archive.org version of it um, and he also puts a lot of the saints that are known through tradition, through having read enough books that you know that you've collated, he just put together a lot of information that isn't in one place anywhere else, here in one place. Um, so that's a really awesome book, um, and and spiritually, uh, this is I would say the major feature, the major cultural anchor of Assyrian identity because our identity is spiritual. That's why it survives. Um, and when it's not spiritual, it's not going to survive. And one of the, I would say, the defining character of that spiritual thing is the reading of the Khudra. It's the participating in the prayers. It's the being formed by them, uh, by the liturgical music, by the hymnography, by the imagery, by the language. And these are all things that we need to revive um, because they won't get lost. We'll get lost um, by not having them. And so just having a cognizance, again, of the liturgical year, um, I mean, traditionally, we began our year with the first of Tishrin, the first of October. So all the manuscripts, they do that. They're going back to a Seleucid year. Or Anno Graecorum, year of the Greeks. That begins in 312 uh, BC. Uh, so that's Seleucus first, Nicanor's conquest of Babylon. And that was just the standard um, kind of Middle Eastern dating system it was used also it influenced the jewish calendar it influenced of course it becomes our standard uh civil calendar you might say uh this would be our spiritual calendar that we're going through from first of subara to 
fourth Kodesh Ita, which is the, that's the last period before Subaros, the four Sundays of Kodesh Ita. So you have two fixed periods, one that ends the year, the four of Kodesh Ita, the sanctification of the church, and then you have the four of Subara. Um, and in many ways, you, you, you have that calendar that starts first Subara, first of the first week of the Nativity Fast or of Annunciation, and it goes through. But we also have the year that all our manuscripts are written in, all our dating has been done in, uh, um, you know, going back to as long as we have the the common language, common spirituality, the common identity uh, that we have as a Syrian, and that's Seleucid. That's the Anno Grecorum, um, and it's Seleucus, the first Nicanor's conquest of Babylon. When you're reading a manuscript, you learn to delete 311 or 312, depending on what month it was, because it's from October to, um, you know, October through to September, uh, is that year it begins October 1st um, but again that you I don't think it was ever like October 1st is the New Year's they didn't have a New Year celebration um, you would celebrate the beginning of the Hudra because that's a major thing you're picking up the Hudra and you celebrate the resurrection um, when a lot of you know including Jewish and ancient Assyrian Babylonian feasting happened in the spring we of course would wait until the resurrection you can't um, eat meat or have parties in the middle of Lent, and this is so much more big. It's this is the defining moment of not only ours but of everyone's life is the resurrection of the Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. So uh, that becomes the great spring celebration, um, and so I think that you know that this is you know again living in the Assyrian context, what should be kind of what gives you some pause and some thought is that picking up of the Chodra again that makes you kind of renew your efforts to do more of the daily cycle, to enter into the daily cycle more, go to church more regularly, read more of the Chudra, read more of the readings, read more um, uh, deeply in the Fathers. Um, this kind of beginning of a new cycle. Like if you're going to make a resolution, that's when you would do it, not in January. Um, but this is something that I hope that is helpful for those who have an interest in Church of the East things, Assyrian Church things. Um, God bless you. Shikha Baruch Lochon. Thank you. Subscribe. Turn on notifications. Um, uh, goodbye.